Here is our first example for the writing net ionic equations topic. It says that the following chemical reaction takes place in aqueous solution. And I can see that here. Write the net ionic equation for this reaction. Now the first thing I will say, before you do a net ionic equation uh, problem, you need to first see if there is a reaction that occurred. How do I know if a reaction occurred? Do you see a precipitate formed? In this case, yeah, there is our insoluble precipitate that forms when these two reacting solutions are mixed. If, on the other hand, I had the products made here that are shown in the chemical equation, if this were aqueous, but also if this were aqueous, that would mean that I, I form products, but those products are also soluble, so nothing really forms. And so in that case, there would be no net ionic equation. The answer would be no reaction. Okay? So always check to make sure that you did actually form uh, an insoluble uh, compound, a precipitate. And if you do have one, then you will have a net ionic equation like we do in this case. So we need to do three things to get to the net ionic equation. Number one, we need to have something called the balanced molecular equation. Looking here, I see that I'm already given the balanced molecular equation for this reaction. I have each of my reactants, and they even tell me what the products would be, and they tell me that this is a precipitate. I know it's a precipitate because of the S there. So when I mix these two reacting solutions, I have a solution of this and a solution of this, a solid precipitate comes out of solution, and this remains dissolved. So I have my balanced molecular equation. If I check my coefficients, it'll, it'll all look good. So once you have your balanced molecular equation, then you need to build your complete ionic equation. So how do I write the complete ionic equation? Well, in order to write the complete ionic equation, what I need to do is look at my balanced molecular equation and find all of the substances that are actually dissolved in water. So let's look here and see, let's identify what is actually dissolved in water. This is, how do I know? Because of the AQ there. That tells me that uh, this stands for aqueous, and that tells me that this is actually soluble in water, and it is currently dissolved in water. We have a solution of iron to bromide, reacting with a solution of ammonia sulfide. So the ammonia sulfide is also dissolved in water. Now, the iron to sulfide is not dissolved in water because it is not soluble in water. It comes out as a precipitate. The ammonium bromide, however, is soluble in water. So that is also dissolved. So the complete ionic equation is going to actually portray these dissolved substances more accurately. How do they actually exist in solution? As this? No. We know that when this dissolves as a strong electrolyte, an ionic compound, it actually breaks apart. So in solution, I actually have iron 2 plus ions, and for every one of these that dissociates, I get two bromide ions. I also have this reactant, which is soluble. It's dissolved, so it's actually floating around as the constituent ions of this compound. For every one of these, that dissociates, I get two ammonium cations and one sulfide. So I have two ammonium cations. What's the charge of ammonium? Plus one, and hydrated by water molecules. And one sulfide ion, its charge is minus two. Now, iron two sulfide is insoluble. So we will not write it as broken apart into its constituent ions because it is not. It is not dissolved. Ammonium bromide, however, is soluble in water. And when it dissolves, 
it dissociates. So we need to uh, reflect that. So we get two ammonium ions and two bromide ions. Now notice that not only did I write the correct charges for each ion, I also kept the stoichiometry. Okay, so this two means we have two of these. I showed that here. I have two ammoniums. I showed that here. I also have two ammoniums here and two bromides here. Okay, we have to keep the stoichiometry. So let's just very briefly understand what we just did. I have two reacting solutions and I mix them together. I form an insoluble uh, compound. So the complete ionic equation is just showing what is actually in solution. What do we actually have? I have these ions, Fe2 plus ions. I have bromide ions. I have ammonium ions. And I have sulfide ions. All of these ions are hydrated with water molecules. So water molecules are stabilizing them, their charges, and these are all moving around. How do I know that I have iron two plus ions, bromide ions, ammonium and sulfide ions? Because these are soluble compounds and they are dissolved, okay? So when electrolytes, when strong electrolytes dissolve, all these ionic compounds are strong electrolytes, they completely dissociate, which means that this breaks apart into its constituent ions, Fe2 plus and Br minus. So does this into ammonium and sulfide ions. So as these ions bounce around and come in contact with each other, some form ammonium bromide. This and this would, would join, but because it's soluble, the water molecules can pull it right back apart. It never really forms. But iron sulfide, iron two sulfide, when these ions and these ions bump into each other, they form a compound that the water molecules cannot pull apart. And so it actually comes out of solution. We can't forget that. So now that I have the complete ionic equation, I can do number three, which would be the net ionic equation. How do I write the net ionic equation? Well, the net ionic equation is going to show us what actually happened in this reaction. So this reaction is occurring in aqueous solution. When we have a reaction in this sense, what we will see is a solid precipitate, which is what we have here. So I know a reaction did occur because I have a solid precipitate that was formed. So the net ionic equation is going to show us the reaction that occurred and it's going to eliminate all of the extra noise. All of the substances that were present in the solution but not involved in the reaction are going to be eliminated as we write the net ionic equation. How do I know what to eliminate though? Well, you have to look on both sides of the reaction. If I see a substance on the left side of the reaction and it looks exactly the same on the right side of the reaction, that means it was not involved in the chemical reaction. By definition, chemical reactions create new substances. So if I go into this process and come out exactly the same, unchanged, I wasn't involved. So on the left, I see iron two plus ions. Do I have any over here? No. On the left, I, I have two bromide ions. On the right, I have two bromide ions. It looks exactly the same on both sides. Chances are, it is what we call a spectator ion. Well, do we have any other spectator ions? On the left, I have two ammonium ions. On the right, I have two ammonium ions. Let's eliminate them. They were not involved in this reaction. They were just simply there, spectating. On the left, I have a sulfide ion. On the right, I do not have any sulfide ion. And so 
If I look at what is left after I have eliminated all of my spectator ions, what I see is Fe2 plus plus the sulfide ion yields iron 2 sulfide. This is my net ionic equation. I have indicated the states of matter here, and I also have my correct charges. If I had any coefficients in front of these ions or that iron 2 sulfide chemical formula, I should also bring them down here. So assuming we balance the molecular equation correctly and brought down all of the stoichiometry from step one to step two and step three, the net ionic equation should also be balanced. In this case, we see that it is one of these, one here, one of these, one here.